Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. We are going to wait just a couple of minutes to the rest of the class to come. Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. Today is Monday, and I hope you have a very nice weekend and rest very well. Okay, uh, so first of all, this is the class of today. So we're gonna check here the question for tonight so you can participate into that one. And as usual, we're going to check the attendance. I hope everybody can join. Okay, Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Liliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. 
Steven Vladimir Villa Corta Rivera. Suleyma Yvonne Moreno de Hernandez. Present. Perfect. So welcome to the class. I hope you had a very nice weekend. And of course, we are going to continue. So we're going to start with a little video. As usual, we're going to see the video and then provide comments or opinions about it. Let's give it a shot and practice. Hamburger University, it's exactly what it sounds like. McDonald's training ground for their high potential managers. And they graduate with this, a degree in hamburgerology. Large Coke, thank you, have a good day. We need more sausage, please. McDonald's serves 60 million people a day, but here at Hamburger U, students don't learn how to flip burgers. The food is actually fake. These students are learning the management skills to make a restaurant hum in a five-day course, grooming them to be owners. Do we have a baby egg and cheese bagel coming, guys? In the first simulation, long lines, frustrated customers, and flustered managers. Then the orders get more complicated, designed to test the limits of the operation. Stephanie, any more muffins, please? How do you think this is impacting the customer? Everybody's getting upset. All you see is the manager running back and forth and not really helping. It's more chaotic than anything else. So, back to class. All right, my teams, should we talk about what just happened? They were friendly. I just wasn't getting my food very quickly. It was just really busy and kept holding so she kept sending everybody on break. Did we see high service times? Yes. yes. Unhappy crew? Yes. 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 Unhappy customers? Yes. 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 So they try again, this time applying the lessons of the classroom to cut the chaos in the kitchen. We're going to be smiling for our customers. Yes, we are. So I decided to try for myself. That's your order. Okay. And you're going to need to act this out a little bit. A little agitated. <laughs> Obviously, you know, hurry. Imagine how purpose. that works. I have to act agitated. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Hi, would you like to try a nice mocha today? I would like cinnamon melts, a bacon, egg, and cheese bagel, a sausage, egg, McMuffin, and a hash brown. I'm just really in a rush. Pretty fast so far. Let's see if they get the order right. We have a bacon, egg, and cheese bagel. We have a cinnamon melt, and we have one hash brown. And what about the sausage McMuffin? Uh, sausage egg muffin. Let's see. Come sausage. on, guys. They said it was in a rush. Let's go. And I got a uh, All right. That was a minute and 30 seconds. It's still rushed, but the second service was much smoother. Two cinnamon for side two on side one. Better communication made a difference. Our professors teach us, you know, very important life skills about, you know, customer relations and, and most importantly, running a multi-billion dollar company. How many McDonald's do you want to own and operate? As many as I can. <laughs> Founded in 1961 in an Ohio basement, Hamburger U has grown from just 14 students to more than a quarter million graduates, including McDonald's current CEO. So it's no joke. McDonald's says this is the key to the company's success. We may be a big corporation in the eyes of many, but in the restaurants, in that local community, it's that operator that makes the connection. The transformation comes in the form of I can do this. I, I realize that I am a leader. Over the years, companies like Target and Walmart have come to watch how McDonald's trains its employees, and some colleges even give students credit for attending Hamburger U, showing there's much more behind those famous golden arches. Poppy Harlow, Sienna Money, Oak Brook, Illinois. Hey, you two, what's going on? Okay, so what did you get from this one? What are your opinions? Wow, now I understand why McDonald's is McDonald's. <laughs> but that works, I guess, inside US. But long time ago, I work in a, uh, a, I work at Wendy's, and even though they try to implement their standards, I think the difference between countries is remarkable. So, but I didn't imagine having my life that they have like a training center like that. Very good. And how was the experience in the training whenever you were in Wendy's? Tell us about. Well, 
the only I remember the only thing you had to do I was working in the marketing department, but I remember that it doesn't matter what uh, area you uh, were about to work. Uh, you had to know how the process of the hamburger is, the time for cooking, how to serve, and I remember the experience. I didn't do that, but the experience for the representative for Latam. He started uh, uh, serving in, 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 at the restaurant, in the kitchen, but also he was cleaning the, the park lots and, and you need to know how to handle the garbage, uh, where the garbage goes, what type of garbage handled. Uh, it was uh, a great experience, but looking at that video my goodness they look every uh detail they don't leave they don't uh, left for everyone to do whatever they want they have biggest standards i see very good perfect thank you for your opinion actually it's true i mean if you imagine the how it's going to be to work all day long in that kind of restaurants when, I mean, sometimes you have 20 customers and they want their order. They are ordering different things. Everything has to be nice and hot. And I, I don't know, it has to be very, very stressful yeah. and very well organized, right? I believe organization there it has to be very high. Mm -hmm. That's right. Perfect. So any other opinions or comments about the video? Well, in my opinion, teacher, uh, this video show us how to uh, how to important is that the company trained you in whatever service that you gave. So, um, in this occasion, we can uh, we can saw that the first uh, they check how the the team work with any uh, training. And then they only take it a note, and and also uh, when they are right to the room, they try to improve every area. And so after that, uh, they make a teamwork. In making a teamwork, they develop a, they develop every order um, in few minutes. So is the same for other. Uh, industry too because when you work like a teamwork uh, your performance is better than working uh, just one alone in one position so Very good. In this yeah this is that's that was a benefit of the training so true i mean teamwork is one of the most important thing that you you have to do whenever you are in a company working in any position, whatever that you're doing, any kind of company, definitely teamwork is something that is very important. And you need to know what is your role and also know the process, the whole process, right? Not only your role to know the whole procedure, but be, be aware of what you need to do in your role. So very good. And also, as you yes. say, they, they provided feedback, right? I believe that that is also very important. They try first, but then provided feedback to the employees, you need to do this, you need to prove this. They they improved all the procedure and all the manage of the orders. So they get ready to, to be in front of people. Yeah, that's right. And it's important what you say too, that every person has to know the wall process. Yeah, because definitely. Maybe in this time you have to work in one position and then you, you have to move for the other position maybe get a sale or something like that. So you could continue and um, be um, use, useful. Yeah. So that, that's, Definitely. that's really important. That is very important. Yeah, and this industry, I guess, maybe at the beginning is very challenging once you know all the procedure and you know everything that you have to do, I guess it's a little bit better, but anyways, it's very tired, right? And uh, I remember also that in, on the video, they say uh, that the manager, he was like walking around and was not yeah. helping. So, yeah. I mean, the leadership also has to be very important there. The way they manage everybody, right? Yeah, that's right. 
Perfect, That's thank true. you for the comment. Uh, anybody else wants to provide opinions or comments? No more, okay. Am I to go to the Hamburger University? That is something different, right? So I believe that in some other countries they have, uh, I mean, whenever there is an opportunity, they try to take advantage of that one. So you can graduate from that kind of institution in other countries. Here, I, I guess it's just the training that they provide you at the company and they say, right? Sometimes you need to learn on the process, on the go, so. Sometimes that's not that good, but that's the way we are. Okay, so we're going to start here um, and, uh, okay. So uh, we're gonna read a little bit more about how to identify training needs. So we know that in the company, we need to have training. We need to, whenever, even when they have, the employees, they have skills already. Sometimes there is a room for, improvement or sometimes you need some other skills to be learned for many reasons, okay? So we're going to check about this one. Let's see, Yvonne, could you please read the first part? Okay. Even the most effective training programs and methods can leave training gaps in employees or team. Having an indicator of training needs can help you identify performance gaps and provide more comprehensive training. Do you know what indicators of training needs are? Do you know how to determine training needs in your employees? Determining training needs is valuable when you are trying to increase overall efficiency and come competency within a team. Performing a training gap analysis and knowing how to identify training needs at your organization will allow you to recognize training gaps and upskill employees. If you are looking for a training gap, meaning ways to identify performance in your employees and how to identify the training needs of an organization, you are in the right place. Good, what did you understand on this one? Um, okay, it's not enough uh, to give a training uh, to uh, your work team or your employees. You need to know what is the, um, the right way and the right topic uh, of every training to the, the your employees. And you need to know what is the gap of everyone. So the training is not only a topic that you have to give uh, to every. So you need to solve the needs of every group or every employee. So that's um, a really, a really value, valuable uh, way to improve your efficiency, uh, to improve, uh, for example, uh, the method, the work, the teamwork. Uh, I think that that is so important if you can or you uh, need to identify every need in your in your department and that's so important uh, to uh, the performance of every every group or every employee Perfect, very good. So yeah, that is actually very important. I mean, identify what to provide, what training are you going to provide, the method, how long it's gonna be. There are many things that you need to identify. So very nice. We're gonna check some words here. Uh, let's see what is, there are not many actually. 
what is overall? It refers to total. everything. Very good. Related to total. the whole thing, a total of things. Very good. Nice. Teacher, what is the right pronunciation of com competency? I don't know if that the right way to pronounce. Competency, yeah. Huh? Competency, okay. Actually, that is the next uh, word that we're gonna check. What is the competency? It's like being able to do some something. Very good, perfect. Okay, when well, you have like the skills for you to do something, right? Uh, let's see, what is to perform? To do? To do something, pretty good. To execute something, right? Let's a program see. or anything like that. Good. Let's see um, what is to allow or allow. To let? To let somebody do, right? To permit. Good. Uh, let's see. Let me just check if there is any other. No, there are not. Uh, well, scrolling, what is to scroll? Scrolling is the action with the mouth to, <laughs> to move on in the page. Or very document. good. It's to do this one, right? Nice. Okay, very good. So let's move on. The next one, it says, what are training gaps? The first two are going to be for, let's see, Ana Claudia, the first two paragraphs. Okay. What are training gaps? Training gaps or skill gaps are the differences between your desired outcome from an employee or team and the actual outcome. Organizations, teams, and individuals employees can all develop training gaps. Employees or teams can have gaps in their hard skill, job specific skill, or soft skills general skills like communication and critical thinking. It's okay to have training gaps. Even the most seasoned companies may need to address uh, disparities. Is that the way? Disparities in That's training. Right. Okay. Expectations and actual outcomes. Good. What did you get from this one? Uh, the the gaps, the differences between the desire or, or the goal to be always there will be, even though in people who receive uh, the best training or even though for the trainers, but this is most for the trainee, um, that always there will be differences because there is a, uh, uh, these other ingredients, the soft skills, that they are very different in every individual. Mm, the communication, the critical thinking. Very good, perfect. So that is here, right? So training gaps are like things that we still need to learn, understand yeah. or learn to do. So definitely that is something that we need to identify sometimes. Well, the bigger the company, the more difficult it gets to identify that one, right? Because there are many departments, there are many things. Sometimes even the companies, they believe that things are going well, but you can always improve, so. That's right. Good, good. Let's check some words. Uh, difference, let's see. What is to develop? be better very good to be better to to have like a product that you are developing also so you are in the process of something right let's see of course you know what is the difference between hard skills and soft skills actually there is 
there in the parenthesis some explanation, right? Like job specific skills. And the soft skills are general skills like communication or critical thinking. So what is critical thinking? To analyze a situation. Very good. So whenever you are able to take the right decision, even when you are under a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, right? So you need to be able to identify what would be the best resolution. So that would be it. Good. Uh, let's see. The most seasoned company. What is the meaning of that? The most seasoned companies. What do you understand? It doesn't matter if they are bigger companies or corporations, always there okay. will be gaps. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, maybe uh -huh. to, uh, that companies that have more, more experience maybe or are older than another companies. Very good. Yeah, actually it's that one. Is that the companies that they have been on the market uh, in production or in process or anything for a long time. So even the companies that have been a lot of years, they need also to not even get skills, but sometimes to get modernized, right? So of course, what is disparities? It's the opposite of pair. It's the opposite of pair, yeah. When it's not even, Different. right? Very good. Differences between, you know that even though you have been with a lot of people in the same department, you have different levels of knowledge or skills and things like that. So you need to address that one and check what you can do so they can check into that. Let's see uh, the next one. Uh, the next paragraph is going to be just the paragraph in one line. It's going to be for Heidi. Okay, it's from... However. However, the best companies regularly perform a training gap analyze to identify performance issues and fix them when they arise by determining training needs. These companies can adjust their training to provide their employees with the new skills they need. So exactly, what is a training gap analysis? What did you get from this part? That uh, during the training, they try to find out what the employee needs more help in. So they can fix it before they, they get to the real life, the work. Okay, so. perfect. perfect, nice. So yeah, I mean, the best companies, they always regularly perform, they identify, they analyze the training. I mean, their performance issues, right? Things that are happening that they believe that it can be better or that are causing some problems and they provide training. Even when things are going well, they always try to remember people why they're here, how to do things, how to use new software, new tools, things like that. So, and uh, they need to adjust. This is something that the best companies do, right? So whenever you, you are running a company, even if it's a small one, you need to adjust everything to provide feedback, to improve things and uh, get the new skills to employees that are working and performing there. Uh, let's see if there are words here. I don't think so. Let's see. What is issues? Problems. Problem. Situations. Problem. Good. Very nice. And what is to arise? That it doesn't happen yet. They come. Very good. That they are coming too, right? They are getting into something. Let's see. There are no other. So what is a training gap analysis? So this part is going to be for uh, Danny. Could you please help us? Is it possible for you, Danny, or is it not possible? Uh, yeah, sure, it's possible. Okay. What is a training gap analysis? A training gap analysis 
also analysis. called analysis. Sorry. And a training gap analysis is also called a training needs for analysis or a scale gap analysis. It's a method for identifying the competency, knowledge, or skills that your employees lack. Often these gaps will keep your employees from performing at the highest level in their position. <clears throat> Becoming a skill gap analysis, performing a skill gap analysis allows you to recognize the skill or knowledge your employees need, align training with organizational priorities, find and implement a solution, reskill or upskill employees. And this cycle isn't a one-time thing. You all want to continuously observe and evaluate your training program to ensure it's moving your company toward its goals and objectives. Good. What did you get from this one? Um, well, uh, with that uh, method or, or, or tool, you can, um, or you'll be able to, um, to find out what are the skill or, or, or the level of the skill and knowledge uh, your employees have or, or all the employees in the company have. And then um, you will be able to, um, to take of that uh, insight and align to, to the priorities or the needs for the company. And when there are uh, a strategy well um, well um, thinking, you need to think about uh, the skill or the knowledge that that employee must have in order to um, achieve your goals, right? And, and I think that that is another source of needs so for for knowledge or skills and the strategy. Very good, perfect. So yes, this is something that is very important to be done before you're going to create a program of training. Right? Remember that this is something that some companies do in a yearly basis. So they analyze for the next year what we're gonna do. Of course, you can adjust throughout the year, but it's something that you need to do before you provide the training, definitely. So yeah, it's also called training need analysis. And uh, let me see if there are some words here. Okay, I have a question for you. What is the difference between competency, uh, knowledge, or skills? Compet competency is the correct pronunciation? You can say competency or competency, depends. On the Com minute. Okay, uh, well, for me, the comp competency is what you can do. The knowledge is what you can know. And the skills maybe is the, is the way that you are um, solve some solution about your uh, capacity maybe. Okay, very good. Any other opinion on this one? That is actually very nice. I believe that knowledge and skills are is very is very clear about the difference, right? Knowledge is something that you know, skills is something that you do in a way that you should be doing. But what is competency? <clears throat> Maybe competency could be okay. Go on. Okay, thank you. Maybe competency is a, something in your profession a, where you are qualified to do something. A, or uh -huh, some 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 kind of activity, okay? But uh, it's uh, certified, okay? Knowledge okay. is all the all the uh, all um, 
like all the things about this topic or about your career, but um, all the knowledge that you were um, taking through your profession or through your career and skills uh, could be for in, in my mind could be um, the level of your competency okay maybe um, basic intermediate advanced in our case in this in in this uh, course okay i i think it it actually be, you're good yeah okay. yeah that the competency uh, is something like a certifications what is something that you are able to do very well but it's not just a task so let's analyze that one if you, we think about driving a car for example so knowledge is the first thing that you know i mean you go and read the manual you know what is this gear for what is the button for what are the lights for so you have the knowledge but you don't do anything i mean it's just theory the one that you have skills are different things like for example i'm able to turn on the car i'm able to brake i'm able to move the car i'm able to park and competency is like i'm able i'm able to drive a car according to the laws of my country so everything together you are certified that you are going to be able to take a car move it park it i mean do many things so that might be the the main difference okay good let's see what else do we have here um it says allows you to recognize the skills or knowledge your employees need align what is to align to put something on the same the way same way yeah it's like creating a standard right Everybody has to do this in the same way, align. So align training with organizational priorities. So we're going to have the priorities, the objectives, the goals of the uh, company, and then we're going to bring that kind of training to our company. Let's see, find implementation of solution and reskill or upskill employees. Very good. What is the difference between reskill and upskill? Maybe uh, when a topic is not clear at all, uh, you have to um, reskill or maybe to study again some topic in order to um, to develop or to to get a completion, but uh, certified maybe. Uh, and upskill it's about when you are, when you have um a kind of level okay maybe basic so you upskill your your level your english level okay from uh, basic to um to inter intermediate maybe very good perfect actually that is it i mean reskill is like you know how to do that one but anyways we're going to we're going to provide you the training about this okay actually happens, happens a lot, and maybe you have seen that in the companies, that some people, they they have been in the position for three, four years, and they're doing things, but in a different way. So when they go to the training, they say, oh my goodness, I didn't know that I had to do this way, or that I have to do this method or this step before this other one. So that happens a lot. Some people, they get used to it and sometimes they have bad habits. And whenever they go to training, you can correct those things. And of course, up skills is when you have the skills, but you are going to improve the skills, to add something to the skills. Good. Uh, well, uh, let's see. No, there is no other, I guess. Good. It says how to determine training needs. So the introduction is going to be for Juan Miguel, could you please help me with this introduction, the first two paragraphs? Okay, uh, how to determine, determine training needs. Knowing the concept of a training gap analysis is a good foundation, but, but it's also helpful to understand how to use one, 
how to use one in determine determine no, determining determine, determining training needs practically. Here are six steps to help you learn how to identify training needs at your organization. Okay, so uh, this is like an introduction, right? So, uh, what did you get from this one, Juan Miguel? Just the introduction. Okay. Um, what I uh, have understood, it's about uh, in order to uh, determ determine, determine. determine training needs, you have to uh, set a base, okay? First of all, uh, and obviously uh, this training has has to be aligned with your organization, okay? But it isn't, it isn't enough because uh, um, how can I say this? Okay, I work at IT department. So uh, I have to, um, what I want to certificate some knowledge, okay? But if this knowledge or if this uh, kind of topic is not related with um, with my main functions, uh, the training in this case is not available, okay, for me. So uh, um, you have uh, to determine what are the main functions of every uh, person in your organization and establish um, the base of everyone, of every role. I, I don't know if, if role is okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So um, in papers, like we said in papers, there are some level, okay? But every person has more level, okay, or or a, um, a higher level or, or a lower level. So you have to establish these differences, this gap, okay, in order to establish a standard, okay. And obviously, obviously uh, this kind of activities in Spanish, it's um, DNC. Diagnostico de Necesidad de Capacitación in English could be, um, I, I don't know how to say that correctly, but it's related, okay? I don't, uh, I, I don't have to ask for a certification who is not related with my level and with my activity, okay? Okay. Yeah, actually that is it. And well, the name for that one is actually this one, Training Gap Analysis. So. We analyze and create a diagnostic about what is needed to be done. So uh, definitely it's helpful to understand how to, how to identify and then how to run a program of training, definitely. And we're going to check six steps to help uh, the organization learn and identify needs. So the first one is set goals. That is going to be for Roxana Asensio. Okay, well, before evaluating and assessing your employees, baseline is the correct pronunciation. Baseline correct. knowledge, yeah, it's essential to set up some goals. Ask yourself and your leadership team questions like what are what are our organization's goals? What company objectives are we trying to achieve where do where do we want or what i'm sorry <laughs> no where, where do you where do we want our organization to be in three six twelve months think about where you are as an organization and where you want to be talk over your goals and objective to see if you are moving in the right direction. Okay, what did you understand on this one? 
Well, in the first one uh, time, we need to uh, identify what is the identify. I identify what is the principal goals or uh, identify the objectives because with the employees and the team needs to work according to that objectives. So for example, if you're working in a sales department, maybe you have a, a goals rela related with a specific um, Utilidades, how do you say utilidades? Uh, utility, you can say that. Okay, utilities, and maybe you need to create a specific objectives in your uh, publicity or your, I don't know, your uh, way um, to try to get that goals. But if you are uh, working with your team in another objective, see not in the principal, for example, that when we are talking about the utilities, maybe you, you can get the objectives. So in the first time you need to identify what uh, is your principal uh, objectives or goals and try to uh, create the work around there. And always uh, when, for example, when you are working with a team, the boss need to um, improve some uh, processes and try to uh, explain to the rest of the department and working together on that. Yeah. Okay, perfect. That was very good. Actually, yeah, the first thing is to set goals goes for the training and of course the first thing is to check the goals of the organization what is our main objective as a company the main objective of each department things like that so you will be able to provide trainers of course then we need to check some other steps but that was the most general thing to check the objectives the goals from the company and then align everything together okay uh, what is baseline everybody like, like initial uh, phase okay anybody else's i think is the it's, it's like the noun is the base is the um support i don't know something like that well, actually, yeah, that is, I mean, it's the most basic thing that they should know. The minimum, the minimum requirements and skills that every uh, person in one department has to, has to have or yeah. have to have. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, if, if you say person, it has, has to have. Okay. Point of reference. Okay, very good. Yeah, everything is correct. It's the most basic, right? The minimal, what you or what the person in a position has to know as at least, so they can move away with the everyday activities. Uh, what is something that is essential? Basic. Something that is a must that you must have. Exactly, it's a must. I mean, without that one, it's not possible to, to work properly, right? So, very good. And then let me check. Um, there are no other words, I guess. And at the end, there is another paragraph that says, clarifying your goals will help you evaluate where your employees are and what they still need to achieve your company goal. So definitely. So you need to clarify into that one. Next one, number two, it says identify the skills or knowledge need needed to meet goals. That is going to be for yourself. Number two, identify the skills or knowledge needed to meet goals. Now that you clarify your goals and know where you want to go, you need to figure out what's required to get there. 
Determining training needs involves identifying the skills, hard and soft, or knowledge that you think your employees need to possess to reach company goals. Understanding the skills required helps guide and focus your training so that you don't waste your time and money on ineffective training. Good, what did you understand? Basically, that if you do the first step well, if you identify and set the goals well, and, and you let that part uh, very, very, I don't know, very, well, dejarla como muy claro, I don't know. Very clear. Very clear, thank you. Then you don't waste, like the last line say, said, you don't waste your time and money because remember that training is, in, is an investment. So you don't want to waste your money. And absolutely, if the employees uh, are going to invest their time that maybe they can do, that time that maybe they can do another stuff or, or things about that, that are related to their, their position, and they are going to use that time to the training, you are the responsible or the leader, the manager, uh, are the responsible or the trainer are the responsible to use that time well and that money well. So basically that uh, if you do the first step well, you are going that is that is identified that that uh, the that needs you are going to invest well too. Very well, perfect. Thank you. So we have two steps already. The first one is to set goals, check the goals from the organization and for each department, and then identify the skills or knowledge needed to meet those goals, right? So that's why it says now that you clarify your goals and you know where you want to go, you need to figure out what's required to get there. So now we know the goal, we need to start understanding the different steps for, for us to achieve that one. Very good. Let's check some vocabulary. What is to figure it out? Investigate or find out. Same as find out. Very good. Find out to research to investigate about a solution, the answer for something, right? Good. And uh, what is, let me check. I don't think that is tall. Well, what is ineffective? The opposite of effective. Definitely. So something that is not going to work well, right? Number three, evaluate employee competencies. So that is going to be for Ramon. Are you here with us? Hello, teacher. Good night. Good night. Uh, for the people backing? Yeah, it will be number three, evaluate employee competencies. Okay, piggybacking on number two. You want to take your list of skills and competencies needed to meet goals and figure out how your employees match up. Same ways to assess your employees' current abilities and knowledge include using questionnaires or surveys, observe, observing employees and examining their work. Giving your employees an assessment, you can also, okay, thank you. You can also talk directly with employees or managers, ask your employees if there are anything they need to their job better, checking with the managers to see if they, they not, um, noticed, no. Notice. Notice, sorry, uh, any areas for improvement. Make sure that encourages open feedback as identify, identify performance gaps and providing feedback go hand in hand. Very good. What did you understand on this one? 
<clears throat> I think, um, for example, in the in some companies, they make sure that their employees um, are capable. Let, let me see. Um, capa están capacitados? Are able to, or they have the competences? Uh, yeah, yeah. In the, they are able to to do the 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 that work or the or for those um the let me see those jobs and and to know that uh, they those companies evaluate uh, like uh, three months, like uh, six months, and that in the paragraph in the any. In this par and in this paragraph, there I there are um, some. Um, let me see. Some. Ah, oh, some for the palabra, Sorry. Uh, for example. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Unos, unos ejemplos de 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 lo de cómo podría evaluarse. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So yeah, there are some examples about that one. So definitely the, the third point is going to be evaluate employee competencies. Uh, piggy backing, what is that? Anybody? Like on back, like, I don't know. Mm. On back, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's something like that. So it's like just after the number two is this one, right? So it's immediately after that one. So whenever we know the goals of the company and then identify the different uh, skills and competencies that the employees should have, then we need to evaluate if the skills, the knowledge, the competencies of the employees match to, to the ones that they should have. So, uh, of course, there are uh, where the gaps are going to be, right? So, let's see. And what is to match up? Coincidence. Coincidence. Yeah, so it's like, they are like the same, right? So if we need this one and they can do this one and they're the same, we're fine. That is very good. And it says there are some ways to assess your employee's current abilities. What is assess? Do you remember? Evaluate. 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 And current, what is current? Current, what is current? The maximum. Uh, in the moment, right? At this very moment, where are the, their abilities? Okay. So the first one is a very good one because it's something that we're going to get feedback from the employees. So it's going to be like, what do you want or what do you need? Since they are there in the company, I mean, in the position, making everything that it should be done, they know what they need, right? If I had a better computer, if I have the access to this software, if I if I known how to do this or this other thing, and they provide you the feedback, right? So that is very good. Maybe the most common. The other one is maybe the most important for the company because one thing is what the employees want and another thing is what they need. So observing employees and examining their work to check the KPIs, right? To check how is the performance, the productivity, the efficiency, 
and then you are going to check if there is a gap. If I need to improve this data number, this KPI, I need to provide the tools to my employees, right? Giving your employees an assessment, not the most popular, but it's something that also gets you an idea if they know how to do something, or if at least they know in theory what they need to know. So those three uh, things are very good. And also says tied directly with employees or managers. So this is also very good to take the time to go and observe people working in their workstation and then ask them, like, who, who do you do that one? Who told you to do this in this way? Why don't you do it this other way? So you will be able to improve in the very moment something or change procedures, things like that. Ask your employees if there's anything they need to do their job better. Again, this is in the interview, right? So what do you need? What do you want? Checking with managers to see if they notice any areas of, of for improvement. So, yeah, that is like uh, another thing that is very common to be done. But not all the leaders take the time to go and see people working. You know what is a big problem in all the companies is that managers on the top they create procedures, plans, methods, strategies and then send that to the supervisor, the supervisor to the head of the department, the head of the department to the employees. But sometimes it's not the same. Communication doesn't work very well. They understood something different. They do things that are different. And that happens a lot. So it's a very good idea if you are the leader of a company or a department to go and actually sit down and check how the work is done. Maybe just a morning, just to go by and check if everything is going the way it should be. So definitely that is gonna work. Okay, it's gonna work for this. And there are no more words, I guess. Okay, number, four, well, actually it's time for us to, to check the attendance. It's nine already. Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Good. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josue Garcia Martinez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Elena Susana Cuellar Albanes. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Maria Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramon en Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ipez Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernandez. Present. Perfect. So now, yes, we're going to move on to the next one. Number four. That is going to be for Maria Alejandra. Track, track value data point. Uh, once you, you've set clear expectations, create a list of necessary skills and knowledge, and identify 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 where your employees stand currently. 
you should choose and track data points that are relevant to your training goals. If you're looking to increase customer satisfaction, uh, you may want to track the number of positive of positive reviews received for clients pre and post training, or perhaps uh, perhaps. your goal, perhaps uh, your goal is to see sales increase month over month for the following years. In that case, looking at the trend in up sales, um, sales to current clients and help you see if your new sales training is effective. You want to choose data points that can aid, aid, uh -huh. uh, aid in evaluating the effective effectiveness of your training. Good, what did you understand on this one? <laughs> I don't know, teacher. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe the data points or the uh -huh, data points uh, is relevant for to understand that the at different uh, points in uh, the sales or different more and you want and you identify um, what is that the reason for that you sell more in one month or that compared with other months in that you go and you identify that uh, what do you correct and what do you need to improve for your uh, bring a satisfaction to different clients and you identify that you have uh, the employees need a training or a specific abilities to uh, develop or like this? Very good. Yes, actually that is it. I mean, you need to track available data points, meaning that once you understand the goals that you need, I mean, the, the skills that you need, the employee have to have uh, and to match and check, evaluate what skills actually they have, then you are going to check the results and identify what will be the ones that are going to allow your company to achieve the goals that you want. So that is also very, very important. Let's check about vocabulary. There are not many words. Let's see. What is a trend? The way that something uh, follow. Very good. It's a way for you to measure through time, right? Uh, the way something is happening. It's like the behavior of something. It, yeah. it could be something that become very popular. Also, it's possible to say that one. That is something that is like very popular, like many things right now. Sometimes a war or something that a famous person say is a trend in the social media, right? Good. Okay, number five, assess current training resources. Okay, this is going to be for Jose Wilfredo. Assess current training resources. At this point, you should be aware of what goals you want to achieve, what's need, to achieve them and what training your employees need. Now you, you watch to decide how to deliver the necessary training to your employees. Virtual is the new normal in our workplaces and our employee training. 
One of the best virtual delivery methods for employee training is a learning management system, LMS. These powerful tools offer a host of benefits. Customized training content, remote accessibility, wide range of training modalities, e.g. gamification, micro learning videos, social interaction and communication, feedback and service, real-time reporting and tracking. Using an LMS will provide your employers with engagement content that they'll retain. At the same time, it gives your management team the ability to access the training and make adjustments quick. Very good. What did you get from this one? Well, um, to be honest, maybe in this case, they uh, take a point of LMS training that is right now one maybe is on the top of the bottom that is LMS training. And they also hear uh, like the beginning says that we have to follow uh, some steps, but in this point, uh, most of the companies uh, has to, well, most of the companies know what their employees needs and uh, what will be the, the benefit for the company and how to develop the training for their employees. Very good, perfect. So yeah, we need to assess the training resources, right? What do mm -hmm. we have? What can we do? Do we need to hire another company? Do we need to get another trainer? The resources that we have. So, and uh, well, it says also virtual is the new normal. So that means that it's the most popular, right? It's yeah. the most popular way for training. So it's going to be a little bit easier, maybe less expensive, more convenient in general. Very good. Yeah, that's right. Let's check some uh, words. Uh, Almost the same words here. What is to deliver? How to implement in to that implement. context. Okay, very good, nice. Let's see. What is host? Anybody? Host? Maybe, maybe, man, maybe. In that content is like many contents. Okay, very good. Yeah, so, a so number, number of. Okay. The like number. a setup. Okay, like a setup. Very good. Nice, that's good. And let's see, it, it says that you will be able to customize trainings content. That is really good because you will be able to, not to buy a whole program, but to get only the topics that are relevant for you. Remote accessibility, of course, wide range of training modalities, for example, gamifications, micro learning videos, things like that. Social interaction and communication, feedback and service, and real-time reporting and tracking. Actually, that happens here. I mean, the English classes, uh, Insta4 is able to see how many minutes are you in the class. So you have real time reporting for that one. You will be able to track. And uh, engaging, what is to be engaged? Commitment. Commitment, very good. What is to retain? Keep. To keep. To keep, very good. And uh, no other. Okay, the other one is custom training. That is going to be for Marcos. Okay, custom training. Lastly, you should match your training to your needs after you've spent the time and money. To perform a training gap analysis, you don't want to give your employees generic training. The best way 
to give your employees the training they need is through a customized training program. Customized. Employee, sorry, customized training program. Custom employee training will be on brand and tailored to your specific needs. With, with custom training, you control what your employees learn and how they learn it. It will be well worth the investment to develop a solid custom training program for your employees. What did you get from this? Okay. Um, um, I think it's uh, important um, this kind of training. The custom training is because uh, we don't have, for example, the, the the um, company, the enterprise don't have um, the whole, all the resources, money, and time to to teach or to 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 pay some courses or training and learn all about any area. And uh, so they need to focus on a specific process and the specific needs of the company. And uh, so the employees need to, to learn some process, not all the process or all the the the, um, the theory about any area. So it's important to to, to have a, a, a well investment, a good investment. Okay, perfect. Yeah, actually that is it. I mean, custom training, you will be able to then provide the the training that the employees need according to the company's object. So, of course, uh, you need to redo that every time, I mean, every three, six months, a year at last. So, so you will be able to provide exactly what they need. Uh, let's see if there are some words here. What is to tailor something? Something to fit you, in this case, to fit to your, needs, to, to your needs. Very good. Something that is made exactly for your needs, right? It's not more, not less. Exactly. Good. And uh, what is something that worth? Worth. Value. Um Valuable. Very good, valuable, very good. Okay. So uh, let's check this part. Okay, this part is going to be for, let me see. Ada Cáceres. One of the best in the indicator of training needs is a desired outcome from employees or teams not matching your expectation. If you recognize these party, this parties in your outcomes and expectation, you will benefit from the performing and training to analyze. Um, a training gap analysis with help in determining, determining. the determining the training needs is a uh, needs and identify identifying performing identify performing the uh, gaps performing is a skill gap analyze is simple as following six basic steps clarifying the goals identify the skill the needs to reach the that goals Understanding current employees' gain knowledge and knowledge. training the. Sorry, teacher. Yeah, uh, knowledge. It's the employees' knowledge. Thank you. Tra tracking the training effectiveness, choosing the a good training platform, and provide the customer training. Um, the. Tracking training effectiveness, effectiveness, choosing a good training platform, providing consumer training. However, it can be difficult to, to do and analyze, create the 
create a cost, cost customized training program and choose the right training, the platform. Um, the platform all on your own and you need help closing your skills gap in your employees. We will go to you cover it. Okay, that is it. What did you understand on this one? Um, the, um, for me, is uh, is the necessary is the 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 um, identify the step. Uh, for example, the clarify the meds and goals and the objectives. Uh, identify the needs there, the 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 necessity. Um, only that teacher. Okay, very well. So it's not always so easy, right? It's kind of difficult to identify, to do everything that needs to be done, but you need to invest time and money on this one because it's very important for the organization itself. Good. Okay, I have a little graphic here that was kind of interesting. So it says levels of training needs identification. So the number one, uh, let's see, I'm going to put this in presentation. Uh, okay. The first one, Jose Osmin, could you please help me reading number one? Yes. Okay, number one, so needs at the organization level where our general weakness in the organization exists, where training in the organization is most needed. Very good. What did you understand on this one? Okay. Okay, so the once they found like something is like the witness, so they had to like the training right in order that they can like support it and, and also implement right. So something new in order that they have more information about it or so they can be like a knowledgeable person. Okay. Well, so the first level is going to be like a whole thing for the whole company, right? Where a general weakness in the organization exists, where training in the organization is most needed. So we need to analyze everything for, first of all, in general, for the company itself, for the whole identity of that one. So that is going to be the first step to check in general how the numbers are going, how it's going to impact this or this other thing. So that is very, very important. Number two is going to be for Francisco Eduardo. Hey teacher, number two. Yeah, please. Need at occupational level. What is needed in terms of the skill? Added to, to, carry, to carry out the various duties Judith. related to uh, Duties related to a particular job or occupation. What did you understand on that one? Uh, teacher, what means uh, duties? Duties are things that you have to do. So the things that in your position you need to do uh, so you uh, achieve your goal. Huh? Uh, like uh, or, uh, responsibilities. Something like that, very good. Okay, teacher. What is needed in terms um, well teacher uh, the I don't understand very well the, the, the contents. The content is says identify training, right? Yeah, that's the topic for the whole class. Um, right, uh, I, I, I understand uh, that the, the training uh, is related to uh, a position uh, because um, the difference position 
uh, and or different level the the position need uh, different uh, training because uh, uh, every uh, every level position uh, has different responsibility, right? Issue? That is actually true. I mean, uh, every position, you know, that you have, the companies they create a profile, right? And for this profile, right. sometimes there is just one person in that position, but sometimes there are many people on that position. So you need to to check the needs for the position first. I mean, that's the second one. Right. Versus the organization, and then the second one is the position. Right, and because, uh, for example, the uh, operation level, uh, the training is different to the, for example, uh, uh, office department. Nice. It's very different. Very true. That is very true. Nice. Perfect. Thank you. The number three is going to be for Fernando Gonzalez. Okay, teacher. Uh, needs at individual level. Determining deficiencies in particular skill, knowledge, and attitude on the part of the individual. What did you understand on this one? Uh, is a very good way to identify what training needs because you identify uh, deficiencies in the skill of your employees. Okay. Yeah, so this is going to be the most specific levels, going to be individual. So maybe you have a position with a hundred people in that position. So now you need to go one by one and identify, determine what they need. Sometimes you will need to provide a training for 20 of those people, another training for the other 50, and another training for the other 30. So they are with the skills they need because sometimes the lack of skills is different for all the individuals. So as you can see, first one is the organization, then the occupation, and then the individual. So that's the way for us to analyze that one. Okay, do you have any questions about this? No teacher. Okay, so let's discuss some other aspects. So um, question for you, for everybody. What is the worst training that you have ever had? Uh, tell me, please give me the comments and opinions on what happened. And why do you believe was the worst training? Maybe when uh, I have been uh, quickly changed in a department and I need to get a lot of information, new information about the new activities. And the other hand, I can leave my um, old activities because we don't have enough um, employees right now or in that moment. Mm -hmm. And so I remember that I have in two departments in the same in the, at the same time, and we had to try to, to, to be focused in the, in the new activities, but it was very complex because I didn't have enough time. I didn't have enough, um, uh, what, um, knowledge, knowledge. And maybe uh, I was uh, stressful because in that department, there was uh, other people and the people leave the department and the person that give me the training is not the principal in that department. So in the final, uh, maybe both were um, looking for answers because we had a lot of uh, questions and we didn't have uh, enough knowledge about the activities in that department, but uh, we had to do. OK, 
Okay. For me, it was the worst because the person that give that was giving no the la persona que me estaba dando the person that was delivering was delivering was delivering delivering was was delivering hasn't hasn't no tenía didn't hasn't, have didn't have enough knowledge about the activities in the department so it was very complex okay because well, in that in that moment i maybe i have a lot of questions and i don't have answers so i can't um have the enough uh, knowledge about the processes actually you are right i mean when well, you had a lot of things that were negative there you didn't have much a lot of time for you to to get the training also you were doing the job the regular job that you had also the person didn't have the knowledge that you wanted to get at that point so i believe that the first days and the, that you were doing the job that you were learning it was kind of difficult right yes and the situation is that you need to solve you can do a, a excuse because it's your it's your work so you need to to do the process what i, I don't know con lo que tenga, con lo que sabe, con lo, con, yeah. con lo sea. <laughs> with the resources that you had at the time yes <laughs> yeah that is so true you cannot give any excuse right you i mean we totally understand you but at that time it's like we need to do that job and that's it right so it was kind of difficult very good. Thank you, Roxanne. Uh, any other opinion on what was the worst training experience that you had in your life? In my case, teacher, I guess that uh, one time I had a one method that is named fails and videos that you have to check some videos and then you have to complete an assessment but you have to get a, a just to say a hundred like score mm -hmm. or 900 like score if if not you can continue with the training so i guess that it's really is it, well for me it was really difficult because it was my first time that i was joining and training something uh, like that so uh, that's my worst uh, time that I uh, had a training. Was that a long training? Yeah, yeah, was like a two weeks. Oh my goodness, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. So I, I guess at the very end, you were kind of stressful. Stressed yeah, that's out. right. Because <laughs> I had to review a lot of, but just to understand, and then uh, you have to complete the assessment. So it was really difficult. Oh, but, okay. I passed. I already passed. Yeah, very good. That's good for you. Nice. Okay. Maybe one of the things whenever you get this kind of training, when there is a lot of information, is that you're not going to get 100% of that information. So you understand what you need to do, but you won't get exactly 100% of the, of the training, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, maybe you are more focused on passing the exam than that really, really learning. Good. Any other experience? Bad experiences with trainings? Me, teacher, I my guess, uh, in, uh, the training of the health personal aim to produce in its case change in the conception, motivation, and the performance uh, of members of the healthy team uh, within the free Feed the family world or the pollution and are the ready occupation and is also a focus in the other uh, new new personal induction is very 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 important for the the new me members and the and the, the the team and the jobs okay yeah actually that is very really true whenever a, a new member is coming 
sometimes they don't know much about the company and it's very important to provide a very good training, right? So good. Any other experience that was not good whenever you had the training? No, let's do the other way around. What was the best training that you had? The one that you say, oh my goodness, this is good. You enjoy it, you learned. Tell me about that one now. Hello, anybody? the best experience that you have in the training, the best training. So no one had a good um, training? In I my break. case, in my case, uh, it was uh, um, in January, okay? I was expecting for this uh, course for uh, almost three years. It was related to um, websites, configurations, and how to create websites uh, from, uh, from scratch. And uh, it was about 20 hours, but uh, from eight to 12, uh, from Monday through Friday. But for me, it was the best because uh, I had the opportunity to learn uh, more about this topic and how and how to do uh, these things uh, in a better way. Um, I work something some, sometimes with with uh, websites, uh, but uh, it's not the same when you are learning from uh, um, how to say this uh, in a in a self-learning, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you have, you, you, uh, you learn some tricks and tips, but it's better when, uh, <clears throat> sorry, when a person who is uh, certified in this, uh, in this kind of activity, uh, deliver this training because you have an, a, a general idea how to do this or that things, uh, but this person is, or, or this person tell you, uh, tells you uh, the better way or the best way to do this or that thing. Um, in my case, 20 hours were enough, not less, not more, because all the training uh, or all the course, I was uh, expecting more and more in this one uh, was one of the best that I have uh, participated. Very good, perfect. So you say something that is very important regarding training. You were not too much or too less. So you were exactly, you learn exactly what you wanted. Your expectations were accomplished. So yes. Yes. very good. That's the way it is, right? That's the way it should be. Good. Any other opinion about the best training you have in your life? It can be about well, it. In my case, teacher, was when I began to work at the company where I currently work. Because the training use uh, really good methods to explain us uh, the world information that we will uh, need to use in in the in the production floor. Uh, so it was really nice because the, the trainer was really dynamic and enthusiastic and gave us the complete information. Very good. So that is it. So if you enjoy your nice there is going to be a very good very nice that you got the very good training whenever you started yeah perfect any other person the 
the best training that you had in your life? The best training that I had, teacher, was when I became branch manager at the bank. Uh, they sent us to Guatemala to receive a training from a uh, branch manager from New York and the bank was city. So it, it was very cool, very interesting. Very good, nice. So any other experience that you can share with us? Okay, a different question. Whenever you finish your trainings, do you always feel a survey about the, the training? Oh, yes. In my case, every training I do. And most of the time, uh, the company uh, uh, launch like uh, two or three trainings every week. And we always need to complete the the assessment and beside that a survey how was this developed and i think that they read the service because the way how they structure the trainings uh, they have been changing a lot i can say from one year ago to date uh they've been trying the, the one developing trainings They've been trying different methods, different ways. And at the end, they understood that it's not necessary to um, launch like an extended or extensive training. It's important to have the, the best of the training in like around 15 minutes or 20 minutes will be the, the largest one nowadays. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. So I believe you say something important. I mean, they have learned because you provided feedback, right? So mm -hmm. survey is very yes. important because it's the feedback on how did you feel the training was delivered or the topics or things like that. And the good thing is that the companies to learn about that one, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, they change the way how they develop the trainings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is very, very important because I mean, you don't need sometimes to be one hour in a training. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's too much. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, yeah, it's a very good thing. Very good. Uh, and the other people, what about service? Do you always get service whenever you finish your trainings? In my case, of course, teacher. Because I achieve the goals that I expected to complete with the training. Okay. And do you agree that it's important to provide feedback uh, on the service whenever you finish the, the training? Of course, teacher. It is really important because it's the, the matter of that maybe the trainer knows if something went wrong or if have to improve in maybe, I don't know, teaching on a specific topic. Very good, perfect. You know, sometimes happens that people, they have the knowledge, but they do not know how to transmit it. Or maybe it's not the, the length, the proper length of the training, not the proper time. I mean, if you are on Sundays there, in a training, sometimes you are not that happy, right, to be there in training. So, yeah, feedback is very important to provide feedback and honest feedback and um, something that helps companies to improve. Very good. Okay, I have another question for you. Uh, what is the best method that you believe uh, your companies has provided a training with? I mean, there are many methods, but which one do you believe is the best? Something that you have identified there in your trainings.
Anybody? Can you repeat that question, teacher, please? Yeah, what would, in your opinion, what is the best method for trainings? The one that you have experienced. Maybe, teacher, when you are uh, learning and practice at the same time, not separate, not just like, uh, this is all the information and then we practice. It's, no, for me, I think that is when you are receiving all that knowledge, that new knowledge, and you can practice at the same time. So I think that, well, in my personal case, uh, it works for me. I, I feel like I can re like retain or, or yeah, retain uh, the information easier than first uh, receive all, all that, that information and then I practice. I feel that works more when you can do both at the same time. Perfect. Yeah, actually that is one of the best methods. I believe it should be done on every training, right? Uh, yeah, it's good to, to listen to somebody that knocks a lot, but you need to, you need to prove to yourself that you are able to do that one. So that is one of the best methods, definitely. Any other opinion? I agree with, uh, I guess that was Ileana, right? Yep. I agree with her because it's really important. Uh, may put in practice what you are uh, learning and is the, is the best way because um, I, when the training, when a training has to, to be, it's like when you are learning to drive because if you only if you only see that someone is driving, so you're not gonna learn. So you have to practice to learn. So that's why I guess that the method of the of the best strategy for that is uh, the method is called um, I guess that is role playing. Okay. Like that. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Perfect. So yeah, actually that is that is very important to practice, to be sure that you understand. Sometimes when somebody is telling you how something is done or needs to be done, uh, you understand. But when you're doing things, you realize that there are some things that you need to ask. I mean, I didn't know that this was going to be like that. Or, or what happens in different situations or, or things like that. So definitely when you're practicing, you will be able to identify that one, ask the question. So whenever you go to the real, the real time job, you are going to know how to handle that one and have critical thinking. Okay. Have you ever heard about something that is called competency-based uh, training? I really like that one, to be honest. Have you yes. ever had that? What yes. do you know about that one? Uh, just let me second, please. Take your time. Um, okay, competency-based learning is a type or a kind of learning who is related to um, Was related to, yeah, in this, um, how to say this, is exactly one competency that you have to develop and put uh, in practice. To put in practice. To put in practice. Okay. Um, for example, uh, in, in my case, there is a training uh, or a course uh, which is related to configure and set and deploy uh, a tool. Okay, maybe an antivirus or something like that. So the competency that you have to develop and you have to uh, put in practice is all the kinds or all the things related to, to this from, uh, 
from configure, from uh, um, how how can how can I say this? Um, from the basics through the expert level, okay? Um, or maybe you can uh, divide it into two or three levels. It depends, okay? But you have to um, to ensure about the, the person who is receiving the training, or in your case, if you are a, a, um, a person who is in, in this training, this person has to, uh, to learn this thing and it certify this competency, okay? Uh, for example, if you are um, learning to change your wheel car, La, la llanta de tu carro. Okay. The uh -huh. tire. The tire. Um, you learn all the things about uh, the tuercas. I don't know how to say. Mm, I don't remember that one. Let me just check. Okay, but uh, the, uh, this, uh, all, all the components, the tire, the, the ring, uh, the, uh, all the tools. Mm -hmm. And after all the training, the person has to be capable to change the tire for um, for 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 um, for themselves, okay, or for himself by themselves, okay. Uh -huh. Yes, by themselves. Okay, very good. Yeah, actually, competency-based uh, training that is very very good. And uh, I don't know if you have had that kind of training, but the competency-based uh, trainings, they have three levels, okay? The first one is to know, that's it, to have like the knowledge. So you know things, you know the theory of things. The second one is uh, what Juan Miguel is saying, that is that you need to practice, you know how to do something how you actually go in and do it yourself all right so but the third level is the most difficult is the most difficult to achieve because the third level is the b meaning that you are going to be a different person whenever you finish the training the course so you will be for example in a company you will be more involved with uh, the values of the company, for example. So maybe the training is about many other things, but now you work better with other people. Now you you are a team worker. So that is very difficult to achieve, but it's possible. It's possible that at the at the end of a training of several hours, you will be actually a different person. Have you ever done something like that? Have you ever experienced a training that has been like, you feel different whenever you finish the training? I think all these kind of, of um, types of learning in uh, who, who, who are delivered by Insaforp is based on competencies, okay? Uh, in my case, I work as, as uh, an instructor on Saturdays. So I have to ensure all the persons, all the people who is attending this training or this course uh, should be able to, um, to solve many things in Excel, for example. So I have to, um, to explain or yeah, to explain all the things related, uh, for example, for a problem, okay? So not only uh, deliver the training only for the tool, okay? Uh, it's, rela it's related about all the, I don't know how to say, el entorno, environment 
Oh. Okay. All the environment, um, all the uh, situations that they could be uh, or or they could have in in their jobs in order to uh, put in practice this kind of of, of learning. Okay. So uh, you have or you pass from, for example, uh, from no uh, or or from a level from one to 10. Uh, you know one at the beginning, but at the end you have to know uh, or you have to um, have the 10, okay? In order to, to be qualified for this competency. Okay. Yes, actually that is true. Uh, it's meant to be that way. So they have to, at the end, not only have the the hard skills right how to do this or these other things but to transform yourself yeah. to be a different kind of person to use what you have learned not only for your work but i mean to be a, a very important part of not only the company but the society so that is something that it should be happening on any training so Maybe another problem that we have is that, for example, in basic education, we have a lot of teachers, right? We, we know that we have very good teachers and some other teachers that were not that good. Maybe the problem is that they don't have the, the spirit for that one. I mean, some people, as we say before, do you remember when you go to the university? Sometimes you don't know what you're gonna study. You go because you want to be a professional. You want to uh, earn your living and then some people sometimes they get graduated from teachers, from a career as a teacher, but they uh, are not, it's not passionate about that one. They are not passionate about teaching. So of course that is going to impact not only his job, but the students, right? And yeah. that happens a lot. Some people, they dedicate to that one, but just because there is no other job. so. And that's, that shouldn't be that way. It should be like touching lives, people, not in every class, but sometimes you can try to do your best so the other people become better. There are people who has, a, I don't know, much or many knowledge men, but much knowledge, a, much knowledge men, but they are not a, the best, a, for explaining the topics or for explaining the activities or all the things related in order to people understand the main objective or the main activity of, of, uh, of a topic, okay? So people, after this kind of people, they uh, people said, um, I was there, but I didn't learn uh, nothing, okay? Very true. That is true. So there are many things that are related to this one. That's why whenever we check the needs for the training, we also need to check about that kind of aspects. Who is going to deliver the training, right? Because not, it's not only important the knowledge, but the way that you transmit that, the way that you interact with other people. So that is very important. Good. So we're going to actually stop this thing. Okay, and uh, we're going to check the attendance, but just before we check into that one, do you have any questions before we finish? Is everything going well with the platform? Yes, I have a question. Go ahead. Well, well that's for mine. I'm sorry, so you have questions or you don't? No, no, I don't. Very good, clear as Archata. Nice. So my friends, we're going to check the attendance for today and we're going to go to bed. Um, Ada Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. 
present. Good. Y Liliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. For you is the 101 today, Jose Marcos. Okay. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Jose Sorry. Uh, no worries. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibet Asensio de Mejía. Present. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope to see you tomorrow. Be careful with the rains. Don't get sick and dream in English. Bye bye. Okay, hello, Marcos. Hello, teacher. How are you today? Mm, a little bit tired, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, Mondays are difficult, right? Yeah. Okay, so the first question that I have for you is, uh, how do you feel you're moving on with English? Do you feel that you're learning, that you are getting something? Mm, yes, yeah, I feel I am here on improving my my fluency and yeah vocabulary i think i don't know sometimes when i try to speak i feel like i first need to to have clear the idea in spanish then i i am, I am able to tra translate it so i think it's not correct in that way because to um, think more fluid so I have to prove that. Okay, yeah, you are right. So uh, it's better for you to start thinking only in English. In that way, you are going to, for first of all, if you are not able to say something, you can go and look in the dictionary or anything like that. You will see that uh, you will get the new words and implement that into the daily basis activities. And then at the whenever you do that one, if you are thinking only in English, you will see that. Uh, your English is going to improve. So, and whenever we have the chance here on the class to ask questions or anything like that, to provide opinions or comments, do it. I mean, here it's not important if you do a mistake, little by little, uh, we're going to improve. It's important for you to speak the more that you can, okay? Okay, okay, teacher. Um, uh, also, I think in this course, uh, uh, I think I'm really, uh, yeah, the, the previous one, I, I don't know too, but in this one, I, I think I am catching more vocabulary, that, that, that uh, dynamic of, of asking about the meaning of some word, I think is really useful for us, so thanks for that. Ah, it's a pleasure. You know, I try to do that when I try you to speak and analyze words or uh, ideas or thinking about things. Uh, this week and the next week also, we're going to do some other activities to, to improve those kind of things. So let's see how it goes. Okay, teacher, thanks. Um, I have a, a question about the, the platform too, with the, with the uh, homework 2.2. Okay. Okay, yeah. I, uh, the, the instruction said, rewrite the sentence again using not only, but also. And the first 
So the first one that is there are problems with the children, there are problems with the parents. I had there are problems not only with the children, coma, but also with their parents. And that's a uh, oh, point at the end of the sentence. I don't know why. And, and it was not correct? Yeah, it's not correct. Okay, let's try uh, the same. There are problems not only with the children without the coma, but also okay. with their parents. But also with their parents. Yeah, okay. just delete the comma. Yeah, yeah, that is correct now. <laughs> ah, okay, <laughs> very well, that's good. So I had to erase the comma, avoid the comma. Yeah, for that one, you can just delete the comma. And the rest of the exercise it was good. Right? Ah, yeah, yeah, I had to, had to erase the comma. Okay, okay. thanks. And teacher, please. And do you have any other question? Any other thing? Um, no, no, for now, no. Okay, very well. So uh, your English is very good. Yes, you need to practice. And if you continue practicing, definitely you are going to improve the level. Uh, but I believe that your pronunciation is very good. And also the way that you express yourself. Whenever we have the chance to speak, try to speak. Uh, don't hesitate, okay? Just jump in yeah. and, and talk whatever you want to say okay yeah yeah i feel that i have to be more confident with myself when i speak english because in that way uh, i think the words and uh, flow better so uh, because sometimes i feel like i'm wrong when i'm talk when i'm currently saying so i hesitate for a while so it's not not good yeah but if you continue, I mean, if you, if you jump in and if you speak the more that you can, uh, it's okay if you listen to yourself and you feel that you are making some mistakes. Sometimes, I mean, that happens, but the good thing is for you to start correcting yourself. So listen to yourself, correct the next time that you speak, and then uh, you will improve very well. Okay, teacher. Got it. Thanks. Perfect. Marcos, any other thing before we finish? No, 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 no. Perfect. So it was a pleasure to be with you. Have a good night and see you tomorrow. Okay, teacher. Thanks. It was so pleasure. Bye. It's a pleasure. Bye bye now. Rest. So do you. Good night. Good night.